Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All you sun seekers, I, uh, <laughs> uh, welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday, this Communion Sunday, this New Member Sunday. It's all sorts of wonderful things are happening today. And uh, I know that we'll be in a, probably about two or three weeks, you all will be thinking, Wow, I wish it was as cool now as it is, <laughs> as it was on uh, June 5th. Uh, so um, enjoy. Uh, I encourage you to consider signing up to help make our services possible. We always need greeters. We always need uh, folks to bring flowers and folks to host our coffee hour. So if you're able to do any of those things, um, that's wonderful. Hopefully you all have in front of you or with you two hymnals. You need both the black hymnal and the red hymnal. You need the communion elements and you need a bulletin. So there's a lot to, some of you I see balancing carefully on your laps. Um, and uh, we also, another thing we're looking for is we need a few drivers for uh, the summer lunch program, which begins in a couple of weeks on June 21st. Uh, so far, we're up to 58 or 59 children. Um, it's probably going to grow. And um, what that involves is, even if you only can do it once, um, that's great. Uh, it involves on a Tuesday morning, going to Aldi, getting the food there, going to Clearbrook Farm, getting some produce there, and then bringing it all to Arlington High School. Uh, the challenge is you cannot have a small vehicle. My car, which is a small Subaru Impreza, cannot fit it. The, the, big, the issue is you have to get bread crates. You know those big long things, that pallet kind of things that bread comes in? You have to get a bunch of those and you have to be able to fit them in your car. Now, two people could do it. If, two pe if you, you and a friend wanted to do it and bring two cars, then you could definitely do it. But the ideal car would be one that has a big an SUV, a truck, or a big back end. Like half the cars here I see could definitely do it, more than half. Um, but um, that we really could, uh, we really appreciate. A station wagon. A station wagon would work. Yep. Station wagon, SUV, pickup truck are the ideal or a car with a big back end. Um, and <laughs> not, nothing personal to the car. <laughs> um, summer lunch is almost here, and we still are. We do need our snacks. Um, the box will be here every Sunday, if or if you want to drop it off at the office, uh, or just let me know when it's a good time for you. I'm usually around, uh, and they need to be individually wrapped. Uh, so. We hope to get generate more. Also, I want to put a plug in. In two weeks from last night, the Remember Baker event, which you see a sign there under the tree for, is happening here in our church. We um, will be providing the space, and it will part of it's going to happen in Bailey Hall. Part of it's going to happen actually in the church. Part of it's going to happen under this tent afterwards um, for a reception. Um, but it's going to be a very cool event. These folks have been practicing now for a a month at this point, um, and uh, three times a week. And so um, they, it looks like it'd be really cool. It's gonna be a reenactment of that those historical events. Um, and if you don't know about Remember Baker, I'd encourage you to Google it when you go home and you'll learn all about him. Uh, so um, hopefully as many of you as possible can come. It's a free event. You don't have to make reservations. You just show up that day. Uh, it'll also be filmed and, um, played back. Walt, I think you're the, are you the cameraman? Walt will be operating the camera inside for that event and it will show up on both GNET and CAT TV afterwards. Okay, that is all the announcements I have at this time. I have one announcement. You have one announcement, yeah. Brian? Come on up. The church council met uh, last Sunday after church, and there's there's a notice in the bulletin, the newsletter that you got this week. We're setting up a search committee for our new pastor. We have we have a year, more than a year to go, but time will go by quickly. So we're looking for uh, a five member search committee. Um, if people, if any of you would like to be on it, please contact one of the church council members. Or, you know, Sue is the head of the church council. 
uh, and just um, write a note about what you feel as though uh, you'll bring to the search committee. It's, it's a big responsibility, it's a lot of meetings, there's some travel, um, so we're looking for uh, volunteers. So look at the, the, in the newsletter, I've got a, a, a message on it and, and let, let us know. Uh, but that's that's my announcement. Yep. Well, with that announcement, let's uh, begin our service of worship by um, opening our black hymnals to number 2236. As we sing together, gather us in. Seated. I invite you to join me in the call to worship. Do not give easy or unthinking response to this day's call to worship. For today, we ask God's Spirit to fill us that we may prophesy and dream dreams and see visions. The call to worship today is a summons to be touched by holy fire. Even now, the flames may dance above our heads, igniting our opinions on peacemaking so that they blaze into commitment. Even now, the flames may be burning into our hearts, animating us, leaving us no peace as individuals until God's justice and peace fill the earth as the waters fill the seas. Visionaries, dreamers, let us all worship with courage and with hope. Let us worship God. The wind at our backs, we entered Jerusalem, only to watch him die on the cross. 
it spiraled so quickly. Trial, torture, crucifixion, death. But on the third day, the breath of God blew new life into our futures. 40 days with the risen Christ. Before he ascended, Jesus reminded us that the spirit will come. It was on Pentecost. It was on Pentecost when the wind breathed into each and every one of us. Sacred breath, move through this tent and in these homes, unlock a song within your people, breathe into us your hopes and dreams for a world filled with justice, love, and peace. Amen. Let us join then together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, it's wonderful to be able to welcome two new members. So I'm going to invite Sue Congdon and Anne Smith and David Moore to come up here. Sue, if you join me behind this podium, and Anne and David, if you would stand here in front of the communion table, would be great. So you want to face that? You can face that way. Yeah, you can face that way because they're going to be. <laughs> well, they're going to be talking to you also. So, um, so I'm going to take this out because it's going to be too hard for the two of us. Today we make a covenant, one with another. David and Anne, you make promises to us before God, so that we know that we can count on you, and we make promises to you before God so that you know that you can depend on us through good times and hard times. You have a church and a people. And so now we ask you, Anne and David, do you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I do. I do. Do you promise to be Christ's disciple? to follow in the ways of Jesus, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to be a witness to the healing ministry and the loving message of Jesus Christ as best as you are able? If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. Do you promise according to the grace given to you to grow in your faith, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's work in all the world? If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves this community and the world? If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. Will the members of the Federated Church of East Arlington please rise? Do you promise to help David and Anne find their place in the body of Christ, to pray with and for them, to welcome them fully on holy friendship to the angels for them in times of distress and servants to them in times of need? If so, please answer, we promise with the help of God. We promise with the help of God. Let us, be, let us, the members of the Federated Church of East Arlington, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ. We welcome you with joy in the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of trust and well at, at work in the world. Well, you've both brought your light to us and we don't leave you empty handed. 
So we have for you a pocket shawl that's a symbol of belonging and a certificate of a membership. And you're encouraged to keep this small shawl with you through good times and hard times and lots of everyday times. Whenever you hold it, may you know that you have brothers and sisters praying for you as you are also invited to pray for us. Additionally, Raybeth has some beautiful peonies to share with you from her garden. Thank you. And Sue has your certificate of membership to share with you. Go that way. <laughs> Please join me in welcoming them. And I have a blessing for you too. Uh, Eternal God, we praise you for calling us to be your servant people and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for sending to us Anne and David that we may work together in serving the needs of others. Confirm in us the power of your covenant that we may live in your spirit, share regularly in worship, and so love each other that we may have among us the same mind which was in Christ Jesus to whom be all honor and glory. Amen. You all can have a seat now. Thank you. Welcome. OK. Hey, was, are three kids like to come up? You guys, come here. I need your help. I'm sorry, Walt. I'm moving a little. Hopefully, you'll still hear me and all our friends at home. So come on over here, you guys. Come over to this cake. So today is a day called Pentecost. And, and what Pentecost is sometimes called, it's called the birthday of the church. And that's because it was on that day that suddenly a whole group of people got to hear what was really important, what Jesus had to say, but they heard it in their own language. They were a bunch of people from all different places, but all of a sudden they could hear it just like they needed to hear it. And so they, that meant that they then were supposed to go out and be the church to the world. And so it started on that day. And there were 12 disciples. So that's the number 12. It has lots of other meanings, too. So that's why there's 12 candles on here. So I'm going to light the candles. And then we're going to sing happy birthday to the church, everybody. Let's. Do you like birthday parties, you guys? Yeah. Yeah, me too. Wait, wait, Let's see. If, it's not up. There it goes. Yeah, they're not being very cooperative, are they? It's kind of windy up here. There's a little bit of a breeze, y'all. This is one. This is one of the hard things about being outside. Sometimes, sometimes the wind. Although in this today, the wind is our friend. The wind is really important. Anybody wants to help me, like kind of light them before they all turn into wax? Thank you. I can see you've had practice at this. How you make it? She's trying to help light the candles faster. <laughs> they just all went out. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We may have to just pretend they're 12 or lit. And when we get a bunch of them lit, we're going to just sing happy birthday. OK, don't knock mom, because she's got to. There we go. We might... OK, get ready, you all, to sing as soon as in this two seconds. OK, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. Hey, they, hey, the Holy Spirit's at work here. These little just relit by themselves. <laughs> so you guys want to take um um now I didn't bring a candle snuffer, so you want to you you can just blow them. You, you, we all have wind inside of us. Did you know that? It's called your breath. So you want to are they off? Maybe they'll blow up by themselves. Uh, <gasps> See, they keep these, I don't, and I did not buy the trick candles. These are, <laughs> That's crazy. they're like lighting, they're like going out and then coming back. We may not have to do anything. Yeah. I think, y'all let me know if like during the service they lit up, light up again. So thank you all. So I'm gonna say a prayer and then you can all go back and sit in the warm sun. Loving God, we are so happy to celebrate the birthday of the church. And so we ask that you be with us in our celebrating and that you help us feel the Holy Spirit this day and every day. We pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, guys, thanks for your help. <laughs> just 
Just as we get to be the church uh, when we sit together and sing and say prayers, um, we also get to be the church in sharing the joys and concerns and lifting those up in prayer to God. And so today, we our prayers include a joy of the union, our friends at the Union Church of Proctor, who are right now in an interim period. And I also want to offer our blessings to the Arlington Memorial High School class of 2022, whose graduation was yesterday, and all the other high school and college and grad school graduates that we may know and love. Um, by way of concern, I would ask prayer, continued prayers um, for uh, Steve, Allison's husband, Steve Grizz. Um, he continues to be a patient at Berkshire Medical Center, and so we continue to hold him in prayer. Our, fr our friend, Fred Kerner, has been in the hospital this week. Um, he hopes to be going home tomorrow. Um, and then um, prayers are asked for um, Izzy, who often comes to church here. Her dad, Chip, um, has a very serious illness, and uh, so we'd ask prayers for Chip. And then... Um, we'd ask prayers for Walt's mom and dad, um, Eric and Elizabeth Berger, as of from the Arlington Inn, um, who both have COVID right now and are, have some sim definitely have some symptoms. So we pray for both Eric and Elizabeth. We continue to pray, as always, for the people of Ukraine and all the hurting places of our world. And um, we also pray for all the teachers and, and school staff and students who are trying just to get through this school year with the pall of what happened a few weeks ago hanging over them and um, just lots of concern. So we hold all of all the folks that are in the education business in our prayers. Any other joys or concerns you'd lift up? Phyllis. Gloria, uh, Gloria who's recovering from COVID. Gloria. <coughs> Anyone else? Sue. Um, prayers for Shirley for she's going in for back surgery. Okay. Thank you. Shirley. Yes, Patty. And Janet Wilson, who's also recovering from COVID. Janet Wilson. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. And prayers for Susan, who's taking her friend and staying with her. Praise for safe trip. So you're trying, you're, are you taking, you're taking Shirley over there? <laughs> Shirley and her caregiver, Susan. Thanks, Sue. Um, Gloria. Okay. Do you see any other hands? Oh, they just think Axel. Actually, you decided to come over to worship today? Wanted to hang out with the people? <laughs> Axel's a pretty mellow dog, so even if dogs aren't your thing, she, he's usually pretty friendly and pretty very mellow. He'll probably just plop himself down somewhere. So. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> he wanted to be part of church. Okay. Well, let us be in a spirit of prayer. Holy One, we are not sure what it would be like if the Holy Spirit blew through our churches again as it did on the day of Pentecost. However, we want to speak the language that you have given louder and more clearly in our lives and in our church. We, always, we want always to serve you with a grateful heart. Today, we give thanks for the blessing of the Union Church of Proctor. And, and we also give thanks for uh, those who are graduating. And we ask your blessing on those who are graduating, <laughs> um, right? Uh, especially our uh, local graduates of Arlington Memorial High School yesterday. We pray, come Holy Spirit, come. Pour out your fire of love upon us to be the body of Christ in a world that is often hurting and hungry and cynical. We want to bring the good news to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to captives, bring recovery of sight to the blind, and set at liberty all that are bruised. As your disciples, we pray for all who suffer, 
are poor, despairing, burdened, blind and battered. In your loving breeze, we pray for health and wholeness for those who are physically ill, for those who are mentally ailing, for those who are money sick, for those who are spiritually unwell. Help us to love and support those we lift up today in concern. That would include healing prayers for Steve and Fred, for Chip and Eric and Elizabeth, for Gloria and Shirley and safe travels for Sue. We pray for Janet and Michael and Linda and all those others we know who are battling cancer and other illnesses. We also lift up the people of Ukraine and pray for peace. And we pray that with summer's rest, we, we may find peace that can prevail, especially in our schools as they wrap up the end of the year. Oh God, we pray for the healing of your creation and the renewal of the face of the land. We pray for those who are thirsty that they would drink from your fountain of living waters and never thirst again. We lift all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Because of our love for the divine giver, we seek ways to share our love through our treasures and our talents and our time. And whether we give in this hour or throughout the week, in the plate or online or by mail, may we remember that God's spirit encircles our gifts with hope. I invite you to join me now in the doxology. Almighty and gracious God, we ask your blessing on the gifts that have been brought today as well as the gifts that will be brought in the days and weeks to come. We also ask that you would bless us with the power of the Holy Spirit, that we would be aware of your movement within our lives. We ask that you continue to be at work in our world. We ask all of this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together number 2120 in the black hymnal, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. I'm going to play this through once because I don't, I don't think it's familiar to everyone. <laughs>
<laughs> Axel went home. <laughs> Good morning. Please join me in the Psalter found in your bulletins. Lord, you have done so many things. You made them all so wisely. The earth is full of your creations. And then there's the sea, wide and deep, with its countless creatures, living things both small and large. There go the ships on it and the land, which you may place in it. All your creations wait for you to give them. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled completely full. But when you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. May you let loose the breath they are created, and you make the surface of the ground again. Let the Lord's glory last forever. Let the Lord rejoice in all he has made. He has only to look at the earth, and it shakes. God just touches the mountains, and they erupt in smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I am still alive. Let my praises be blessed to you. I'm rejoicing in the Lord, but let my whole being bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today's gospel reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. In the New International Version from which I will be reading of the Bible, chapter 2 is titled, The Holy Spirit Comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of them hears in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below. The sun will turn to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Think of it as the United Nations experience on that Pentecost day in that big house where people from all over the place in all different backgrounds hear from these guys from Galilee who couldn't possibly know their respective languages. The work of the Holy Spirit was entering into their ears and their very beings, arriving in the language of their homelands. If any of you have ever traveled abroad or even to parts of this country where another language is the norm and you spend days or weeks trying to make sense through gestures or pointing or facial expressions, what you don't understand in words, you know what a relief it is to hear even a few words of English. Suddenly a person you don't even know 
feels like a long lost family member. You want them to keep on going as you treasure every single word they say. We yearn to understand and to be understood. And language is how that process often begins. And we don't know how much we appreciate it until it's missing, at least the familiar one. These past couple of weeks, my thoughts keep returning with tremendous joy and a little bit of anxiety to the wedding of my niece and her fiance this September. They recently asked me to officiate, which is really an honor. The thing is, I will be officiating in the Provence region of France. Oh my. And I don't speak French. Assurances abound that I need only speak English in what will be a fairly large bilingual wedding ceremony. I'm truly counting on the beautiful love story between this dear couple, my goddaughter, as well as the power of the Holy Spirit to bridge any divide between those of us who only know English and those guests who only speak French. This gathering of disciples as told here in Acts have come together to celebrate also. The Jewish festival of weeks known as Shavuot was a harvest festival and eventually became a time to note the Torah being received on Mount Sinai. Imagine the chaos with the wind and imagery of divided tongues of fire and all those people excitedly looking around realizing that everyone there was hearing their own native language and were left stunned. They all wanted to know, why is this happening? What does it all mean? Peter gets up and explains using the ancient words from the book of Joel to give meaning to what is happening then and there. When Jesus was at the beginning of his ministry and was in the synagogue, he proclaimed that the spirit was upon him with a mission to bring good news to the poor, release to the captive, make the blind see and set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the Lord's favor of Jubilee. And right there, in all that excitement, it's happening. The church is being born. And what were they to do with the words they heard and this new entity that was called church? It was not intended to be kept to themselves, hoarded like treasure as if they had a secret key to salvation. No, this good news was meant to be shared. This very diverse first incarnation of the church demonstrated how inclusive we are meant to be. Peter here is talking to a bunch of immigrants who now call Jerusalem home. Very soon, the movement will be opened up to Gentiles. And in lifting up the passage from the book of Joel, Peter is making sure that they all understand that the church is meant to be a place for everyone. That includes males and females, slaves and free people. A little later in this chapter of Acts, this inclusiveness will take on an economic turn when they sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. What a great day to celebrate the birth of the church. We did that by welcoming Ann and David as new members with whom we share the awesome responsibility of being church to the world. We get to celebrate this fact outside the walls of the church under this tent which is so fitting today because to be church means we are to look outward to the world. Just as those awestruck followers who heard in their own tongue were being sent out to not just use words of salvation, but carry, acts, uh, carry out acts of love, so too are we all intended to find those who are struggling or hurting or grieving or hungry or lost. And it is with them that our faith turns into action. The church is not a building as much as we like to claim it, or a bunch of denominations, or even a specific group of people. Our identity lies in God's mission of hearing and understanding and making connections with those who may never step foot in our building or any church for that matter. In this time 
of such hate-filled speech and violence here in our country, to breathe in the power of the Holy Spirit, recognizing that change is possible and that we must each strive to be the change we see seek in the world, may be the only thing that saves us all. It most likely won't happen with powerful wind or flames surrounding us. It will happen in ongoing acts of peace and grace and mercy. That begins by hearing each other's pain and responding in love. That is the work of church whose birthday we celebrate today. May the church, our church, be a blessing to the world in the year to come. With the wind rustling through the trees and through this tent and the fire of the Holy Spirit certainly among us, let us hear then this prayer from Garth House. We remember that your church was born in wind and fire, not to sweep us heavenward like a presumptuous tower, but to guide us down the dusty roads of this world so that we may lift up the downcast, heal the broken, reconcile what is lost, and bring peace amidst unrest. It will all begin with words and end with lives and hearts touched by the Holy Spirit that we help lift up higher and higher. Amen. Amen. Let us now come to the communion table together. Do a little, hey Walt, can, can you hear me through Zoom from this place? You okay? Good. So don't only have to move one microphone. Come to the table knowing that Pentecost will always mean heading out from the safe upper room to a crowd of strangers, from a church birthday cake faked with slices reserved for only us, to a red balloon gospel rising from the Christ cup to escape our tight fists and flow into all the world and from the received wisdom of those in the responsible years between 32 and 60 to the excited ideas of teenagers who may be wrong and the fractured wisdom of elders with memories leaking everything but love. Come to this table with holy bread and new words. We remember the ministry of Jesus of Nazareth who invited children to come to him suggested children as model for faithful living and called out against those who put stumbling blocks in the path of one child's life. We remember that Jesus called those who gathered in the upper room children and that fed them bread of hope and cup of blessing so they would remember the loss of God's child and all of God's children and the promise to live again. We are the body of Christ dispersed and gathered with different words, but one heart, which is always true, though we do not always recognize it. Like, like the grains that become one whole loaf, like, like the, the notes that are woven into song, like, like droplets of water that are blended in the sea, we as Christians, one body shall become. In your kitchens and living rooms and here under this tent, I invite you to rest your hands lightly upon these elements, which we set aside to get today to be a sacrament. As we do so here, so we become one sanctuary. Let us ask God's blessing upon them and upon us and upon all those who are in our prayers this morning. Eat these grains of the promise of life. May they Drink from the fruit of God's vine. Let us now eat and drink together.
Let us pray together the prayer of thanksgiving. Peace you leave with us, O Holy One. Even when we are afraid of your leaving, your peace you give to us, no matter how impossible it seems. You do not give to us as the world gives, but you give your spirit to us just so that we may learn to give it away. Do not let our hearts be troubled so much that we stop loving, and do not let us be afraid of sharing in the new tongues we receive from all communion with you, so that we may tell the good news to those who need it, even when we do not fully understand it ourselves. Amen. And let us join together in our closing hymn, number 347 in the red hymnal, Spirit Song. The spirit is blowing everything around. <laughs> this time of worship and while so much of the road ahead is uncertain the path we know some things that are as solid and sure as the ground beneath our feet and the sky above our heads we know God is love we know Christ's light endures we know the Holy Spirit is here found in the space between all things closer to us than our next breath <laughs> binding us to each other until we meet again let us go in the peace that passes our understanding. Amen. Um, if you have your black books and you want to see this, our benediction is new. Um, it might be helpful for you. I'm going to uh, play it for you so that you can see. What page is it on? I'm sorry, 2224. 2224. We have something before, but it's been a while. Yeah. It's, and I don't think we've done it a whole lot, but it's uh, Make Us One, and it's a lovely tune. It goes like this.
May the peace of God be with you always. Let us go now offering each other signs and words of God's peace. Peace, peace be with you and welcome again.